Hey everybody, Peter Stromberg here, back with another video. I uh, just left the gym and I was in there and I had a couple of really synchronistic uh, experiences and it kind of led me to this video that I'm about to post in the parking lot. Uh, I'm in my truck right now and I'm going to share with you guys five mistakes that you could be making right now that can really sabotage your fitness and weight loss goals. So if you're trying to lose weight and get fit, I'm going to go over some things right now that you guys might be doing that definitely isn't helping you. So mistake number one is having your phone with you every second of your workout. I walk around the gym as I'm working out and everybody has their phone. Everybody. In between sets, looking down, oh, texting, oh, doing this. I don't know what they're doing. I can't even imagine. But if you're one of those people who goes into the gym and you have your phone with you and you're texting in between sets or you're on the phone with a Bluetooth or whatever it is you're doing, it's not helping you. It's taking away from your focus. If you're really serious about getting in shape, if you're really serious about trying to make changes in your life, be present with what you're doing. Going to the gym, having the opportunity, the opportunity to work out is a blessing. Don't waste it on your phone. Don't waste it with that screen. Think about what your next set's going to be. Visualize what you're doing. Put your heart and soul into the workout. Don't distract yourself as much as possible so you can get through it and you can go home and tell your friends or your family, hey, I went to the gym that's not really cutting it. So that's mistake number one. Mistake number two, which kind of goes along with mistake number one, is you don't need two minutes in between sets. Now, unless you are a power lifter or you're training for some type of bodybuilding competition or you're specifically trying to generate power for a specific type of sport or something that you're trying to do outside the gym, most of us are there to condition ourselves to get into an overall general shape in order to go out and live life and perform better, be around your kids, be around your spouse, go hiking, go skiing, go riding, do whatever it is. Having two minutes in between sets is not helping you, especially if you're trying to lose weight. If you're trying to lose weight, you should be doing circuits. You should be doing six, eight, 10 exercises and the only rest in between those exercises should be walking to the next exercise or setting yourself up for the next weight. There shouldn't be a rest. And if you really wanted to supercharge that whole circuit, you would do one to five minutes of jump roping or the rowing machine, which is one of the gnarliest exercises in the whole gym. You want to be doing something to keep your metabolism going while doing the resistance training. The resistance training is going to help you gain muscle, build muscle, but it's also going to help you burn calories. And then when you superset it or circuit with that jump roping or whatever type of intense cardio you want to do, you want to do burpees for two minutes, it doesn't really matter. Anything that is body weight in space, anything that has you moving around and getting your heart rate up. And I'm talking, I'm not saying go to 100 or go to 70% of your max because if you're wearing a heart rate monitor, I'm talking about 85, 90% of your max. That's where the magic happens in a workout. There are hormones and chemicals that are released when you get to 85, 90, 92% of your theoretical max that's when things really happen. That's when your metabolism goes through the roof. So if you're taking two minutes in between sets and you have an hour workout and you did 12 or 15 sets, unless you're a power lifter, unless you're a bodybuilder, unless you have some type of specificity training that you're doing for a sport, you don't need to be doing that. You're wasting your time. Again, it's an opportunity. It's, a, it's an honor to be able to go to the gym and exercise. Utilize it. Don't waste it. It's, you're just, you're not getting the bang for your buck. Number three, if you are going to the gym in order to eat something not that great after the gym, I was just in the gym and uh, I was talking about how it was kind of a struggle today. And the other person in the conversation responded, well, now you get to go eat something really good so that you can, you know, feel good basically. And I 
you know, I'm not going to be rude and say, well, that's not what I do, but that's not what I do. I work out so that I can then go eat something healthy. So those two things work together. So I get the maximum results and I see the best amount of fitness. I see the best vitality. I see the best performance when I'm outside. Because for me, the gym is just, it's snowing here in South Lake Tahoe right now. So I'm at the gym so that I can perform so that when I go outside and ride my bike or go snowboarding or go running or play soccer or basketball with my son, I can perform, I can keep up, I don't get injured. So if you're trying to work out so that you can eat, I'm going to give you guys a little hint and it's something that I'm going to talk about a lot. You cannot out train a bad diet. And that's, it's so important that I'm going to say it twice. You cannot out train a bad diet. So if you think that you're going to the gym so you can eat like crap, it's not happening. And you're going to be one of those people who's in the gym year after year. You're there, you're doing stuff, but are you really getting any healthier? Are you really losing that last 10 or 20 pounds? Are you really like hitting PRs, you know, personal bests? And uh, I don't think so. So if you're trying to create change, if you're trying to get more fit, or especially if you're trying to lose weight, the gym is to supercharge your metabolism. The gym isn't the place where you create the excuse to eat like crap. So you can't out train a bad diet. And that kind of leads into the mistake number four. Somebody else was talking about their cheat day in the gym. No cheat days. Cheat days are not helping you at all. I'm not saying that you need to be on whatever diet or weight loss plan that you're on indefinitely and that you should never go off of it at all. What I'm saying is maybe try and go with a 90 or 95% on and a five or a 10% off. So there's 21 meals in a week, theoretically, you know, have two cheat meals. Don't take a whole day and eat 5,000 calories worth of empty garbage calories and just junk food because that sets your system back two, three days. So now you've got the cheat day and you've got two days of digesting and weirdness inside your body. That's three out of the seven days. The whole entire time that you're trying to diet, you're just going up and down. Your chemicals are all off. Your hormonal response is off. Your insulin is all off. It really wreaks havoc. If you eat one meal that maybe is a quote unquote cheat or something that's off of your diet, your body can assimilate that and digest that a lot easier than this whole big day that it takes days to actually digest and work through. So think about that. Think about maybe, oh, I, I had a dessert tonight. Or, oh, at lunch the other day, I ate something that I don't normally. Space out those cheats to equal 5 to 10% of your diet. Don't chunk it in to one-seventh, because that's what one cheat day is. It's one-seventh, which I don't know what the math is, but that's what, 15 17%, 14%. Whatever it is, it's a lot. And having it all at once, it's going to bog down your system. So that is mistake number four, no cheat days. And the last one, and... I just want to say that there are tons of amazing trainers out there and I respect all the trainers, but one of the things that I see, if your trainer is A, giving you two minutes in between sets, it's time to find another trainer, unless you're a power lifter, unless you're doing some type of specificity for a sport, unless you're doing some type of bodybuilding competition. You know, two minutes, one minute, it's, it's too long. And then B, if your trainer can't show you what you should be doing, if they can't actually show it to you and say, hey, this is how you do it, maybe you should be looking for someone else. Because if your trainer isn't in shape, isn't capable of even explaining and showing you an example of the exercise that you're going to be doing, how can you really expect to listen to them? And where is the example for you to have proper form? Lots of people learn by seeing. So when you're looking at something and you're saying, oh, wow, that's how you do it. And then you can look in the mirror and you can mimic that. Lots of people don't have proprioception that is accurate. So what they think their body looks like isn't necessarily what their body looks like. So you need somebody that can show you. And if they can't show you and they don't know what's going on, they're probably not taking care of themselves. That's not to say that 
if you have a female trainer and you're a big 250 pound guy and you're about to do bench press and you've got three plates on each side and you're going to do 315 for sets, I don't expect your female trainer to get down under the bar and press 315. But I do expect her at the beginning, before you load the weight onto the bar, for her to go get underneath on with the 45 pound bar and show you the proper form and just focus you, key you in, visualize what you should be doing because every set, every exercise, you should be visualizing and then you should be looking at what you're doing and make the two meet, make the two match. You wanna really be present and available mentally, emotionally, and physically when you're working out so that you can get the maximum response. So that's my little rant for the day. Those are the five mistakes. Again, we've got leave your phone at home. And if your phone has all your music on it, go on to Spotify, make some playlists that you like, download them onto your phone, and then when you go to the gym, turn on airplane mode. So you're not getting texts, you're not getting Instagrams, you're not getting Snapchats or any of that, whatever that stuff is. You don't need it. You're at the gym to get things done, handle business. Number two is you need to be aware of the sets. You need to be aware of how long you're recovering, what you're doing, supersetting. Just just think about lots of circuits. Number three, you can't out train a bad diet. So don't even try and work out so you can eat crap. That, that doesn't work. Number four, which kind of goes along with that, you can't out train a bad diet. Stop the cheat day. Stop it. Start, you know, intermittently mixing things in that might not be part of your diet, quote unquote, but don't spend a whole day wrecking your whole week with bad food. And number five, maybe look at your trainer. Maybe look at the trainers around you. See what they're doing. Are they energetic? Are they excited? Are they pumping you up? Or are they sitting there in between sets while you're on your phone and they're just kind of biding their time and then you get under the weight and they're saying, oh, good job. All right, that looks great. Oh, and it's just this thing where they're just pumping out clients hour after hour. That's not helping you get to the next level. So those are my five little mistakes. And I actually saw all of them in the gym today. So I figured I, I had to come out here and just make a video and kind of vent a little bit. I'm hoping that everybody here in this space can kind of take what I'm saying with a grain of salt and realize that I am coming from a supportive place. I do want to help you. I want to support you, but I also have to cut to the chase and be raw with you because I'm not the person who's going to lie to you or fluff you up to make you feel good. I'm the person who's going to give you honest feedback so that you can get the most out of the time that you spend doing the exercises and the stuff that you're doing so that you can go out and play and live and have fun. Because again, that's what this life is about. It's about having fun. So thank you guys for being with me and listening to my little rant. As always, I really appreciated bringing it and I, I had such a good time on this video. Until the next time, have a blessed day.